Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla's hardware 4 debacle, Tesla's massive supercharger advantage, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla's concept for a 24-hour diner and drive-in movie supercharger in Los Angeles has had a permit approved by the LA Department of Building and Safety. Tesla submitted their applications in November of last year, and now we're seeing them get approved. That will give visiting Tesla owners the unique experience of dinner and a show while they charge their vehicle. Elon has been hinting at this idea for a while now. It was first proposed to be in Santa Monica, but has since changed to locations in Hollywood. The last we heard about it from Tesla was at in Investor Day, when they simultaneously hinted at their development of a wireless home charger. They showed these renders of the diner and charging pad in the same slide, titled, Can't Forget to Do Cool Stuff. Their senior director of charging infrastructure discussed the diner, but not the charger. In the render, we can see the retro diner and Tesla diner sign, along with a giant movie screen towards the back of the lot. And of course, all the parking spots are Tesla superchargers. Now the project has a confirmed location at 7001 West Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood. It'll have 32 supercharger stalls, two screens playing movie clips, and a restaurant with rooftop seating. The initial grading inspection for the site was on August 9th, and it's been approved, allowing Tesla to move forward with the project. They'll be working with Stantec Architecture, based in Chandler, Arizona, and PCL Construction Services, Inc. in Glendale, California. This isn't Tesla's first venture into adding unique experiences to their supercharger locations. In Germany, Tesla partnered with BK Group to install cube lounges that offer restrooms, sitting areas, food and beverage vending machines, office corners, and more. At another supercharger in Germany, they installed a heated pool so drivers can take a swim break while they charge. Beyond unique experiences though, most of their superchargers are at least located in convenient places near restaurants, restrooms, and shopping. To a degree, this is something we've come to expect with gas stations, so it's nice to see the same thought being put into charging stations, especially since you'll likely be there for a few minutes longer. Even as charging gets faster with new tech, road trippers will still want to take a break to stretch their legs and maybe get a milkshake at a retro drive-in. As I mentioned, this location will be open 24-7, and it'll have car hop service. Hopefully that'll make it worth the wait. Being in the middle of one of the largest tourist attractions in the country, I'm imagining it'll be fairly busy all the time. It would be cool to see even more attractions like this pop up across the country so more people can have a fun communal charging experience. We'll have to wait and see if any other new projects get announced, and we'll have to wait and see if this gets fully built and comes to fruition as we expect. Next up today, there's a lot to love about Tesla, and there has been a ton of improvement through the years. Build quality used to be a regular problem, and at this point, that's largely eliminated at least at scale. Software continues to improve, service centers are growing, and superchargers are readily available and reliable in most areas. The one area of Tesla, though, that hasn't improved is their self-driving side of things, especially with communication. Now, I'm not saying that the technology has been static. It clearly has been improving over the years, and the latest FSD beta is very impressive. But Tesla's communication on this front demonstrates some of the worst parts of this company. Let me explain. More than likely, you're aware of the annual tradition at Tesla where Elon Musk claims that they will achieve self-driving this year. He's been doing this since about 2014, and rather consistently in more recent years. Tesla is genuinely working on this goal, and lofty goals like this usually wouldn't be a problem if Tesla wasn't selling customers on it. Today, Tesla sells their FSD package for $15,000, and on Tesla's website, it's clear about what they will deliver. Enhanced autopilot features along with traffic light and stop sign control. Coming soon is auto steer on city streets, but most customers know this to be the FSD beta. This coming soon has been there for years, all while Elon is promising that this is coming soon in a fashion that won't require driver attention. So Tesla is selling a package called full self-driving capability, but really half of this purchase is an investment in the future with ideas like making your car a robo-taxi to make money for you. And currently this car is completely devoid of the capability of driving itself, that is without active driver supervision. In any case, Tesla's communication here has been rough over the years, but now there's a new twist in this whole thing, hardware 4.0. Customers buying a Model Y, Model S, or Model X in the last few years have received updated computers and camera hardware in their cars. This is great because the cameras are higher quality and the computer should future-proof FSD features on the hardware side. This sounds like a great deal then if you're interested in the FSD investment. 
buy a new Tesla, buy FSD, get the FSD beta with the latest cameras, and watch the system develop. Some have even opted to trade in their older Tesla for a new one since Tesla has been allowing customers a one-time FSD package transfer. Typically, this software package stays with the vehicle and you lose it along with its associated value when selling the car. So this transfer is great, except that hardware for cars still had yet to receive the FSD beta until yesterday. Software can take time, but this time Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that the FSD beta is still lagging six months behind on hardware for cars. He said, quote, hardware for software will lag hardware three by at least another six months as our focus needs to be on getting FSD on hardware three working super well and provided internationally. Again, that's any Model Y, S or X purchase since around May of this year. As far as we know as well, this extends to features like Smart Summon and Auto Park as well, but there's no official wording from Tesla in this regard. This also comes at the same time that Tesla has been offering a referral perk. Buy a Tesla with a referral link, get three months of FSD for free. That sounds great, except that for all but the Model 3, these cars have been incapable of receiving the FSD beta because they have had better hardware. It now is finally beginning to arrive in a small handful of customer hardware for cars, so we hope this expands to everyone who wants it soon. That trial FSD though will expire at least three months before the beta on a hardware 4 Tesla catches up to the software on an older one. You'll get the standard FSD features, excluding things like summon, but almost all of what Tesla is talking about for FSD relates to the beta. On top of this, Elon's FSD timelines are comically delayed, as we know, so a six month timeline worries some that it could actually be a couple years. Originally, we thought this six month delay would mean that the FSD beta wouldn't actually be arriving on these cars at all until then. Luckily, at least, it's now arriving. It seems there was some miscommunication all around, or Tesla changed their tune immediately after some backlash here. When pushed on it originally, Elon did say, it's a real six months, maybe less. We'll have to see what exactly that means, but to me, this clearly confirms that FSD isn't arriving this year, like Elon said recently. If it's six months behind on newer cars, then it definitely isn't ready for the masses this year. Unfortunately, this limbo seems to happen every few months, even for essential features like parking sensors. The one positive this brings is clarification for customers with previous hardware 3.0. Tesla is still working on FSD here, and it's their priority, which somewhat values the customers who have been waiting on this software the longest. At least they are clear here, and customers don't feel the need to upgrade their cars simply for the latest hardware. It's definitely an odd situation though that the latest and greatest Tesla vehicles are actually pretty behind on FSD functionality and the beta is only beginning to slowly arrive after months of waiting. To me though, this is just another in a long line of examples that leads me to the conclusion, don't bother with Tesla's FSD package. Now, if you're a Tesla investor, have the money, or specifically want to beta test self-driving software, go for it. You'll get to see how this technology evolves and you'll be joining the train of pushback deadlines and late notice that your new hardware 4.0 car can't actually get the latest software for another half year or so. Eventually though, it may pay off. In a few years, Tesla may actually crack the code and your $15,000 investment may pay off. I'm hopeful that Tesla will do this, and for some, that is worth the cost and the ride. For the average customer though, this software is to be avoided, and in my opinion, it's the worst part of Tesla. Basic included autopilot is great, and the extra software is nowhere near worth the cost. Their communication is awful, and there always seems to be a reason for them to delay delivering the software that you spent a small fortune on. If you are unsure, Tesla will let you subscribe to FSD for $200 a month, and this is the easiest way to try it without wasting all of your money up front. For newer hardware 4.0 cars though, that FSD beta could be a while. We'll have to wait and see how that develops. The thing that frustrates me most about all of this is how much I had to dig just to write this piece and understand all of these details. Without owning a new hardware 4 car and seeing my features reduced, it's actually kind of hard to fully know what gets delivered amongst enhanced autopilot or FSD on a customer car today. Customers can hopefully watch a video like this or read an article somewhere to understand this fully, but that shouldn't be how it works when you're shelling out $6,000 or $15,000 for software. Tesla should be clear, but more and more it feels like they purposely aren't so that they can keep selling the full self-driving capability 
that has no capability of fully self-driving. In any case, regarding Tesla's normal autopilot system, included standard on all of their cars, NHTSA is about to conclude their safety probe into this system. This investigation first opened in 2021 and has since grown to involve 16 crashes that crashed into emergency or first responder vehicles. NHTSA's Ann Carlson told Reuters last week that a resolution is coming relatively soon and said, it's really important that drivers pay attention. It's also really important that driver monitoring systems take into account that humans over trust technology. Technology. This hints that Tesla may end up having to add stricter driver monitoring than their current steering wheel torque sensor. They have since added driver monitoring via the internal camera, but it's unclear if this is only at play for the FSD system or if it is actively being used for all cars on autopilot. It's possible that NHTSA forces this. As noted by Electrek as well, I think this will be another big Tesla recall that will be announced even though the fix will already be pushed to the entire fleet by the time it's announced. This is typically how it works with Tesla, so we may soon hear about another massive Tesla recall. I unfortunately do see a lot of Tesla drivers these days cruising down the freeway on autopilot with their phone fully in their hand, so a stricter requirement may be something that saves lives and will help prevent these particular types of crashes. Ultimately, the driver is responsible for taking over if this system fails, and this may ensure that they are truly paying attention and not tricking the car into thinking that they are. Speaking of Tesla drivers on their phone, please, your phone can wait. There's a beautiful world out there to see. Podcasts, audiobooks, and music exist free of your eyes and are built into your Tesla's infotainment screen. In 2021, distracted driving claimed 3,522 lives. AAA found that 12% of crashes involve engaging with cell phones, and this has likely only gotten worse in recent years. Autopilot is no excuse, and you are expected to pay attention. Please do so. Self-driving without driver attention may arrive in the future Future, but it is not here yet. Next up today, on a much more positive note, some very big news for Tesla and supercharging. We'll talk in a bit about how big Tesla's supercharger network is getting in their recent milestones, but one question frequently on the minds of owners is, well, supercharging is great and all, but doesn't it hurt the battery? Common knowledge has been that the best thing for a lithium ion battery's longevity is charging at home. Fast charging is more taxing on the battery since it has to fill it up very quickly, so supercharging frequently, in theory, would wear on the battery more, giving it less of a life. Tesla has recently been talking about how their vehicles only lose about 12% of their battery capacity after 200,000 miles, and this has involved cars that were supercharged. However, new independent data from Recurrent is specifically outlining these supercharger concerns. They studied 12,500 Tesla vehicles in the US, and it quote, shows clearly that there's little to no difference in battery degradation between frequent fast charging and rare fast charging. The comparison charts between frequent fast charging and rare fast charging are essentially the same. We can see that in this case, as well as for the Model Y, where frequent fast charging actually gave the car better longevity. That isn't at all to say that means that fast charging charging is better, but that neither seem to harm the battery more. As for recurrence methodology here, quote, we compared cars that fast charge at least 90% of the time to cars that fast charge less than 10% of the time. In other words, people who almost exclusively fast charge their car and people who very rarely fast charge. The results show no statistically significant difference in range degradation between Teslas that fast charge more than 90% of the time and those that fast charge less than 10% of the time. Interestingly, this is something that Tesla doesn't mention in their manual anymore. DC fast charging affecting longevity is not mentioned, and it's very likely they've been collecting this same data at a much larger scale. The only thing they mention is peak charge rate reducing slightly with time due to many DC fast charges. Overall, I think this is an incredibly good sign for Tesla, their technology, and the future of electric vehicles. When explaining the benefits of an EV to someone, there are certain caveats that we have to explain in order to be genuine. For example, charging up to 100 percent takes far longer than going to 80 percent, and you want to change your mindset there. However, if you have to explain too many caveats and then explain that, oh yeah, those convenient fast chargers I mentioned, they actually hurt the battery long term, so try not to use them. That's one of those things that feels like a deal breaker. For many, that would be a total turnoff from this technology at all. What's the point of this if, in order to use it fully, it's actually bad for the car? So I'm really glad to see that with lots of independent data, it's becoming clear that supercharging is totally fine for a Tesla battery pack. For large-scale adoption, this will be huge, especially since not everyone can charge at home.
Another reason this is great news is because of Tesla's massive supercharger expansion. New analysis claims that Tesla's supercharger business could be worth upwards of $20 billion per year by the end of the decade. According to a highly ranked Wedbush Securities analyst, Tesla's supercharger network will represent 3% to 6% of their total revenue by 2030, and that's equal to about 10 to $20 billion. He noted that Tesla's addition of the Magic Dock, quote, provides the company an incremental opportunity to further expand its charge footprint to the entire EV fleet. He predicts this is another strategic move by Musk and co in the long-term story as the supercharger network is a large monetization opportunity. Tesla is continuing to expand their market share of EV charging while fostering the growth of EV sales. This analyst predicts that superchargers will eventually replace gas stations, and when that happens, Tesla is going to have a lot of power over charging rates. While Tesla does have the largest EV charging network in North America and the only international network, what's most going to be replacing gas stations is home charging. Superchargers are mostly used by road trippers and those who aren't able to charge at home. Elon has also said that the supercharger network would never be a profit center for them. It started out as a way to make owning a Tesla vehicle make sense. They didn't plan to make money from it ultimately. Since 2012 though, the network has evolved into something much bigger, so we'll just have to wait and see if Tesla sticks to that philosophy. At the same time, the network is constantly evolving to add new features and decrease charging times. In Taiwan, they've added standalone screens next to their chargers. Traditionally, superchargers don't have screens and business is conducted entirely through the vehicle's screen and the user's phone. These new standalone screens were reportedly motivated by new regulations in the country though, which could mean they're planning to open these charges up to other EVs. According to a publication there, at least three stations already have these screens installed in order to comply with regulations put in place by the Bureau of Standards. These regulations are that users need to be able to see how much electricity is being consumed, accurate to the third decimal place. Tesla's assumption in the US is that EVs have the ability to show these stats in the vehicle, and they've actually turned down funding so they wouldn't have to add complexity to their chargers. That's because complexity tends to decrease reliability and therefore increase costs. Since all Teslas are already built to charge without the additional screen, they must be there for other vehicles. Their non-Tesla supercharger pilot program has expanded to 19 countries, and it looks like Taiwan will be added to that list very soon. Over in Europe, Tesla is currently celebrating the 10 year anniversary of their first six supercharger stations opening in Norway. They tweeted, quote, now our network spans 36 countries, 1,000 plus sites, and 13,000 supercharger posts, enabling freedom of travel no matter your destination. As part of this celebration, they added, by the way, supercharging in Europe is free to all today. This includes locations open to all EVs, 70% of our network. That's an exciting milestone, and I'm excited to see how much more this grows in the next 10 years. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you wanna see a roundup of the latest EVs coming in 2025, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.